do it, right? Look at me. I'm nervous. I never get nervous. 26 years. <laughs> throw me on. You could tell me I have to do the Tonight Show tomorrow in my backyard. I don't care. But this, <laughs> uh, Which, that's where they may start filming the Tonight Show if the Tonight Show gets any worse. That's what it's supposed to be, right? Yeah, that's, um, that would be great, actually. <laughs> I had a, listen, I pitched a TV show that the, everybody told me that it was never going to happen. Colin, you might remember I was going around with it about a talk show from my house. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, no one will. And look, at that's all anybody's done for the next year. Yeah, right. So here it is. The very first news from abroad. I'm Tammy Pescatelli, your host, along with Colin Chamberlain, the very funny Colin Chamberlain, and Ray Zawadney. Hello, hello. So this is just based on, uh, I have a column now on the weekly world news. And it's, they call themselves the world's most reliable news source, but I call news from abroad the world's only real fake news. Um, so I think we're just going to talk about some of the stuff that we've been uh, talking about in my columns and just have a little fun with it and, and just see what happens. Because uh, the guys have come with me on the road. We're all comics and we're all sitting in the house and we're just waiting for the world to be funny again. So we thought, why should we wait? We'll just... We'll just start, right, guys? Let's let's make it happen. Uh, Ray, I can't. That I love that your your headband turns into a gator. I have to say, before we get started, in case we need to mask up in the middle of this show, you got it covered. You also oh, look like one of the spirit of '76 guys. So I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Ray. This is just silly, obviously. Um, so who is going to be my captain for me? Captain on my captain. Who's going to be my pirate? I mean, Raymond, you're, if you're half dressed like a pirate already with the bandana, do you want to do it? Not, not to mention I have a bad knee, so I'm kind of on a peg leg. Oh, but that's I awesome. not, But I have not mastered that voice like, like, our, like our dear friend Colin. So let, let's, let's hear it. Well, do you have it pulled up? Because that'll help. Yeah. Uh, I but it was published uh, this week's uh, Weekly World News. That was September 14th. Just so you know, I'm not trying to brag, but it already has five upvotes, okay? And uh, it, it's been shared. Well, I guess it's been shared about 1,400 times, so we can't complain over that. But that's, uh, that's something new. They're not really used to this yet, so we'll just see. Um, all right, here we go. This is about the ghost pirate. A 300-year-old divorced ghost pirate says walking the plank is easier than marriage. Dying is hard. Marriage is harder. At least according to long-dead Haitian ghost pirate, Captain T, who recently divorced his living Irish wife. His now ex-wife was reaching out to the paranormal world when they met and fell in love. Arr, I should have known on our first date it wasn't gonna work. She said she was a medium, but she was actually an extra large, if you know what I mean. Three years after their high seas wedding, like a lot of couples, they divorce. But unlike most couples, they divorce through exorcism. A priest is way cheaper than a divorce attorney. I got to keep my treasure that I came into the marriage with in my soul. Call Father Allen. Tell him Captain Teague sent you. The spectral marauder was shocked to learn that his ex-wife went on record calling him an energy vampire. She called me an energy vampire? That wench wouldn't let me rest. Every day, her honey-do list got more detailed, he said. And more impossible. I can't clean the gutters. I have a peg leg. How do you propose I climb the ladder? And I'm supposed to be on disability for Neptune's sake. Like how I did Neptune there? You like that? The 300-year-old said he made an essential, he made essential life changes to please his spouse, but they never seemed to be good enough. Of course, the raiding and the pillaging were the first to go. Then it was no more Saturday night poker with me mates, Blackbeard, Julius Caesar, and Elvis. She thought they were bad influence because we smoked some high seas. But when she made me get rid of my parrot, Sparky, because she said she was allergic to it, that was going overboard. <laughs> How many shows about 90 day fiance must a man endure to prove his woman he loves her? 
Captain Teague told Weekly World News that he blames most marriage failures on options. The world is too populated with proximity. We have the ability to see too many other people, not just in person and online, but now apparently even in different spiritual realms. Dating in the 1970s was 1970. Oh, <laughs> 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 Dating in the 1970s. Was... I didn't ask you to do a lot. Just yeah, read hard. the article. That's all. <laughs> He nailed the voice, but we assumed he could read. Dating in the 1970s was hard, but it wasn't as hard as the 1700s, okay? Because in the 1700s, it was very different. You know, you hooked up with whoever was in your vicinity. For me, it was anyone on my ship, you know? And there was once a globe-trotting barmaid and then an adventurous swashbuckler. And blimey, there was even the time I caught scurvy from a mermaid. Despite the disappointment, the centuries-old spirit has not given up on a soulmate. Oh, I'm looking for a sea salt of the earth woman, one who can see past my flaws and accept me for the ghost pirate I am. Just because I'm dead doesn't mean I've given up on love. Names have been changed to protect the living-ish. <laughs> well, okay, so we got through it. That's the actual first story. But, you know, the truth is, and you guys know this, that was actually, uh, obviously, I didn't speak to a 300-year-old ghost pirate, okay? I don't even believe in ghosts. But what I will tell you is that there was uh, a woman who did believe in ghosts. What was her name? Um, Amanda. And Amanda was from Ireland. And she married Captain Teague. This is absolutely based on a true story that she married him and then divorced him because she felt like he was sucking the life out of her. And um, did you guys know that there's actually an app for people to date supernaturally? A really? date app? Mm -hmm. The Amazing Kreskin, um, and that's his real name, like he had it changed legally, so his first name is The, uh, <laughs> opened up an app for people to date supernatural beings um you know kreskin was like i don't know if you guys know him he was like a mentalist probably really big in the 80s when you were born and um he uh, he's now older and he decided that people just the regular dating apps weren't good enough for people who like the supernatural so if you want to meet me made a ghost meet a ghost whatever you can go on kreskin's app what what's okay. what's it what's it called just just for anybody listening yeah or you do you want you want me to get your get a pen ray um, Supernatural Dating Society. Oh. Enthusiasts of the paranormal, the unexplained, the mystical, and the implausible. Well, next show, you guys might be looking at a married man next time. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine bringing, like, that up at a family dinner? Like, you know, how's online dating? But it's like, it's actually been pretty good. I've been on the amazing Kreskins app, and uh, I think things are turning up for me, finally, from the grave. And you know, the good part is like COVID didn't even affect you because you could literally just sit in your house and invite the ghost in your house, right? Like you wouldn't have, <laughs> you don't have to go anywhere. I don't even know if you have to dress up. You know, yeah, now you both are just really selling me on it. <laughs> what about the, it's for alien. It's not just ghosts. It's aliens. Uh, I was going to say big foots. I don't know if that would be big feet, big foots. Big fight. Right? Yetis. Let's go with Yetis or Sasquatches. I, I didn't need a dating app to, to date one of those, though. <laughs> My brother's been married to a couple of supernatural beings, so um, and they, oh, <laughs> there's been different times. Did you guys also know, so like, okay, it seems weird that she would marry a ghost, right? Right. Uh, but do you know that there are countries that allow marriages after death? I mean, Lots of, first of all, there's a whole religion. Mormonism, apparently accord, according to Wikipedia, if we could uh, believe it, it the, the, the part that's the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints, so that's the one that you can also have multiple wives, will allow you to be sealed to someone after death. So you could be like, oh, you know, Frank and I were, you could just make that up. Like, how crazy is that? You could be like, oh yeah, Frank and I were gonna get married. He asked me. Then he got hit by a car, so I'm his wife now. And have that, a that that'll be a new one when I when I go to hit on a girl at a bar and she's like, uh, I'm married. I'm like, Where's your husband? Well, he's been dead for five years, but uh We're sealed. Yeah, we're good. He's, 
all these all these countries sudan china india japan south africa germany south korea and france allow posthumous marriages france would that sounds like a french thing to do it, it's got it in their laws like it's so important like it's called necro necrogamy necrogamy right it's like necrophilia which you can't really do that that's uh, illegal that's everywhere illegal. i think that's probably illegal but to marry their spirit is not that's that's pretty crazy because i know a lot of marriages that you know people were looking for an out and then even in death it's not over right it's so not <laughs> it's not like even and and like you know that the new term like that is someone ghosted you no apparently not that does not mean that does not mean you went away from them you could actually marry them that is so bizarre to me that's where that i was looking up because you know obviously i'm married you guys aren't um so i always wonder where did the death i did not say till death do us part i don't think i really don't remember i'll be honest with you uh i was nine months pregnant at a at a justice of the peace so I was more just saying, what the hell is going on? Um, but apparently, matrimony at first wasn't religious or legal. Did you not guys know that? They said that they were they were made they were casual agreements between families or clans to establish peaceful relationships, trading relationships, and mutual obligations. It wasn't even officially one of the seven sacraments of the Catholic Church until 1563. Oh, it sounds so romantic back then. Right? <laughs> but you're, you're yeah. tied. So that just lets you know that it, death is the only way that you could have gotten out of the contract. Oh, wow. It's like they gave a license to kill, really. <laughs> Like that, like that, like that idea. Till death do us part. It's like, uh, so you know, if he really starts to bother you, you could poison him. That's fine. Murder was always one of the tenets. <laughs> so, like, murder <laughs> was not part of. It. Well, well, poisoning's like murder light. I mean, I think you know, not. Dude, I have people right now that I am related to that I feel are being poisoned by their spouse. I just had to watch one episode of those, those, you know, late night, dark secrets, NBC, Dateline shows to hear about the arsenic or the antifreeze in the coffee. And I'm pretty sure someone is poisoning someone I'm related to right now. Every time they're sick, I'm like, oh, it's the arsenic as I drink my coffee. <laughs> I, I was just about to say, put that down. Just knock it out of her hand. <laughs> right? Wow, that's <laughs> crazy. What, I mean, do they showing any signs of poison no i just feel it in my head i'm just i'm oh. not afraid of a ghost i don't do by the way going back to that to the ghost story did you know that that the lady who married captain teague her best friend because usually it's your friends that talk you out of bad things right like oh yeah. hey, wait a second her best friend was dating a ghost too and I don't know how that relationship ended, um, but well, that that sounds like two people that really needed each other, you know, becoming <laughs> friends. You know, I'm not sure they were, they had any other things in common besides you're also dating a ghost. Well, I guess now we are best friends. Right? <laughs> they met. Maybe they met through the ghosts. You know how girls. <laughs> yeah. are, like, we didn't I got know a girl for you. you. <laughs> He's alive. Uh, let's start there. Yeah, that's, I love that marriage used to be a thing to bring families together because it's not what it is now. Um, yeah. Like, could you imagine, like, both of my parents were divorced twice, so their marriages were not to appease any family squabbles. If anything, there's more of them now. Like, the kingdom is more unrest uh, after the marriage. So, you know. Both of you come from divorced families, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's I, why we're so well adjusted. <laughs> well, listen, my parents, my parents stayed together, and there was a million times I wish I would have like told them to get divorced. I mean, as they get older, it's easier now. I, selfishly, I love that they're still together because I only had one place to visit when I lived in LA. I think that would have been hard trying to figure out where you go. Like, how oh, do you? Yeah. Have I, I, I like that the only perk of divorced parents when you're a kid, you think, is like two Christmases. 
And uh, instead, my dad was just like, ah, it looks like James taking care of it. I think I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I hated it as a kid. Like, once you get older and you realize, like, who your parents are, you're like, oh, this makes sense. Uh, I can't believe they <laughs> ever agreed to this in the first place, to be married. But when you're a kid, like, you do think, like, I'm going to get double gifts. And instead, it's just by the time you get to wherever you have to be, you have to leave for the next place. Like, so you're sitting down, they're serving dinner, and someone's like, mom's outside, let's go. Uh, you know, um, it's yeah. crazy. Well, I, my grandmother, both of my grandfathers remarried. And I had, I had one really good grandmother that was with me my whole life. And then I had another one um, that was horrific. And she was like, every she was but she was like every evil stepmother I, but they don't do you know disney never does the evil step grandmother and when everybody was around she was nice to me and then when everybody was gone she would like pinch me or just say mean stuff to me like really antagonistic stuff mm -hmm. i was just like hey and then i'd go she's mean and they go no you just don't like her because she's not your grandma no i don't like her because she's a bitch quite frankly i can't <laughs> Yeah, because of these welts on my arm. She's been pinching me for months. What? <laughs> yeah, he'd have been better off marrying a ghost, my grandfather. But it's it's yeah. amazing how they even survived all that stuff. But they had nothing else to do. Uh, I forgot who the comic was that said the reason those marriages lasted so long is because they didn't have cable. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense. You know, when you have all these other distractions, it's easy to be like, I could just have fun on my own. But with not, you kind of want somebody to at least, it's like, maybe you don't love them and you're not happy with them, but if someone breaks in, at least you have like a teammate, you know, like that's kind of nice. Yeah, that's, I don't, what do I always say? To, I married him to guard the perimeter. So I don't know, like, well, I think um, that's it. Do you guys have anything else you want to talk about? We're going to keep no, I think I've discussed my, my parents' divorce enough for, for this morning, you know. Well, I mean, we're going to keep these short and sweet. We're going to talk about um, these stories. Uh, they're silly. It's fake news. If you have a story um, about something supernatural. I mean, did you ever see an alien, Ray? Bigfoot? Um, Ghost? I, I, I wish I did. I want to believe them, but I don't know if I do. But I just think it would be cool if there were little green guys running around. I like that idea. But. Colin? I think I, so I'm, I'm not, uh, is supernatural as, you know, my family, my sisters are very like, like into it. They think they're always talking to my grandfather, which I'm like, okay, you know, that, that's a little crazy, but I do think. By the that, way, your grandfather's uh, dead for those people who don't understand. Like, yeah, they're not, they're not like, <laughs> I'm like butt dialing me. Yeah. It's not like <laughs> he's, dead. he's, he's dead. Uh, but, uh, I, I do worry my biggest fear still to this day because my mom's mom was Catholic and Italian and she really instilled this fear into me that I could be possessed at any moment. And to this, this is day, very true. My biggest fear, like when someone says, like, are you afraid of drowning? Are you afraid of like being buried alive? Honestly, God, my biggest fear is of demons. Like I'm afraid I'm gonna be brushing my teeth one day, look up in the mirror, and then just right here, like demon behind me and uh i don't know i can't shake it i i worry that i'm gonna be possessed and no one will know everyone's like he's just acting the same oh we uh, will know trust me <laughs> we will know. you just hope that if you're possessed he's funnier than we are right now that's all thank you I, if i'm killing if i'm killing let me go let it don't be, let it be. Don't do the, yeah depends on the career no let me tell yeah. you something i always say as for me and my house we will serve the lord because i actually I know this is going to sound crazy and you guys know that I'm pretty stable-ish, that I'm pretty, you know, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm crazy in my own way, but like, right. I'm not like psycho crazy. Um, unless you were my boyfriend in high school, uh, then he would say something different. Uh, but I, I saw a demon once. I can't explain it to you other than I was living in Los Angeles and I was on these painkillers because I had a horrible tooth. I mean, a horrible, because I had no dental plan. And I never had experienced painkillers before. Um, and I also had to get them 
from a freelance pharmaceutical salesman. You know how like your friends always go, oh, you're two thirds here. And they, what they gave me was a Xanax. Okay, so I've never really done this since or before, but a full Xanax bar, which mm, apparently can knock you out. Like I should have been asleep. I should have been knocked out drooling in my bedroom. But I decided to take a walk. And I was walking around West Hollywood and I got the craziest feeling I, I mean, to this day, I can feel it. This, like, it was, like, pure evil. And I, I kind of, like, turned almost behind a bush. I can't even explain it to you. And there was a woman crossing the street. Oh, shit. And it, she looked like, it's funny because I won't watch this show on Showtime now just because I, I don't even know, but Penny Dreadful, that, it, it was way before that. So I'm telling you, this was... I didn't have health insurance, so it was 2001, 2002. She had on like a, a petticoat and a long skirt, but she literally was floating. And by the way, that's not so weird in Los Angeles to see someone in different garb because maybe they're filming, maybe they're on some kind of set and have to run home for lunch. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like I've, I've yeah. seen gladiators. I've seen, you know, the I've seen the Spider-Man from the you know Hollywood Boulevard with no underwear who lived down the street from me it was weird but this thing not only was that fear emanating in me but was floating across the street and I was petrified and I literally hid so I wouldn't make eye contact like I was trying to hide my presence to and I've read that they you know that there are some people do believe that there's like a dimensional world that's constantly in battle for your soul, angels and demons that are, you know, I mean, I don't know much about that, but I'll tell you, never, 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 but that didn't scare me off of any kind of drugs. And then I just went and had the tooth pulled. That's why there's a big hole in the back. I was like, just, just get rid of the tooth. I'm never taking painkillers. And that's that. I am, uh, I'm literally looking over my shoulder. I'm so like that is playing on one of my biggest fears, and I am so I, creeped out. Ray is like, I might take a Xanax bar and try to find a wife, but right? I am. <laughs> I and, and you know me, like I don't. That's not my thing. That's why I think this is kind of fun for us to delve into this stuff because we're not really gonna listen. If you're listening to this podcast thinking we're gonna get into occult stuff, and we're not. We're comics. We're gonna have some fun with it. Um, but these are all things. If you grew up in my generation, they had something that Leonard Nimoy hosted a TV show called In Search Of. And they talked about all these things, uh, the Loch Ness Monster, the New Jersey Devil, all these, these things that you've heard about, but what happened to them? And I'm sure you guys grew up with some different stuff. You grew up in Pittsburgh, they had Gravity Hill, where that one area just has no gravity. <laughs> There's one in Cleveland. I think they're all over the country at different points, but it's true. There's just no, now you don't float up like you're, in some kind of NASA thing, but your car does roll up the hill. Yeah. It's an optical illusion probably, but they haven't proven it either way. It's enough to get me not to go there. Yeah, well, here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna come back next week. We'll talk about our next column, um, which it could either be about, I have, they're in the box, so it could be about aliens, zombies, or the New Jersey devil. And meanwhile, we find the funny no matter what, and I'll have some of our friends talk about topics like uh, divorce and even ghosts. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Tammy Pescatelli with Colin Chamberlain and Ray Zawadney. This has been News from Abroad. Okay, so this is the part of the show that I'm calling Frighteningly Funny. I know that, there, that everybody has some kind that you can't live our lives, travel the world, especially the way you do, without having some kind of story of something supernatural happening. So I thought it might be fun for comics to kind of talk about that. So I wanted to hear your story. My story? I have a few. My brother, when he was young, the one, uh, my middle brother, the one time my, um, there were no pictures of my grandparents. Both my grandparents died of AIDS. So I think my dad had always made him sad. My grandfather had open heart surgery in like 81 and they weren't testing. So he contracted HIV, passed it to my grandmother. So we just never had pictures in the house because they died tragically. And then the one time my brother was about four years old and he came to my dad, he's like, dad, I met your dad last night. 
and like just a little, he was just, a, I mean, maybe three and a half, four, like whatever age you're making full sentences. Like yeah. he was ar- still kind of a ar- little articulate. And my dad was like, what do you mean? And he goes, yeah, he said to call him Papa, which is what I used to call him. And then yeah. he described him. He was like, he was taller than you. <laughs> like he just knew what he looked like with no pictures in the house. And then he said he wanted to tell you that everything, to stop worrying, that everything would be okay. And at that time, my parents were having financial problems. It gives me chills. And then it happened again with the same brother. My mom had had a horrible dream, probably financial troubles. Maybe they were worried about losing the house. And she had this dream where she was being chased by big cats and like holding on to my brothers and running. And she had like dropped Kent. So my brother came in the room the next morning after she had had this nightmare and uh, my mom said he had a weird look on his face. And my mom was like, what's wrong, Stan? Did you have a bad dream? And he was like, no, mom, but you did. And then he, yeah, he said, and then he just told her what her dream was. He was like, he had just said like exactly what I said. And then she was like, how did you know that, Stan? And he said, I came into your room last night and I could just see it through your eyes. Oh my God, I think I would have thrown your brother out of my house. I mean, I'm a mother and I love my son, but if he could see my dreams through my eyes, I think he'd be up for adoption. I mean, I swear to God, that is too you much. You get chills, me. right? Yeah. She, and she had two other kids. She could have got rid of him easily. Like, yes, I only yes. have one. So if, if little Luca came in and did that to me, I'd have to really think hard, but he'd probably still have to go. Wow. Is that just kids being more connected to like another, like another realm? Like maybe his little spirit was just so open that he was able to see something. Yeah, I that- think so. Cause I think we all are a little bit. I saw a little boy in my aunt's house when I was a kid. She had a, a weird, one of those old houses. Um, now yeah. it's in East Cleveland. Now they're all gone because there was all this um, gentrification and they crushed them all. And, but they all these houses apparently from the old days with the the underground railroad a lot of them had secret rooms and they'd be behind a closet or like a panic room you whatever you want to call it yeah, yeah. and we were back there we knew about it, it wasn't a secret room we, we weren't playing get out or anything and mm-hmm. i i was little and i i came running downstairs and i said where'd he go and she's like and everybody's downstairs and i, I go where'd he go and they're like where did who go and I go, the red hair boy with the freckles, I wanted to play. And he was, they were like, what do you, and my aunt goes, uh, yeah, no, that there's, oh, I have to go. yeah. And it turns out that there was a little boy who lived in the house with red hair and freckles. And now I never saw him again. I never saw anything like that again, but it was scary enough that I didn't like to watch uh, happy days. I, I can't <laughs> sort of take Ron Howard for a lot of years, <laughs> but oh <my> God. <laughs> that's not, it. This is the segment of the show we call Finding the Funny. It's to let you know that no matter what has happened, some comedian somewhere has told a joke about it. Here's this week's comedian. <laughs> we, uh, we watch a lot of garbage. We, uh, I don't know if you notice, like every cable channel now has a ghost show. You know, ghost hunters and ghost adventures it's gonna be the easiest show in the world to produce <laughs> there's nothing fucking there ever i mean every every show did you hear that no i didn't i fucking missed it again that shit just doesn't scare me about the ghosts they're ghosts nobody dies of ghosts <laughs> you know they don't do shit like if i heard a bump in the middle of the night it I woke up and I saw I saw a ghost. I'd be kind of relieved. Like, oh, good, it's not the plumbing. Fuck! I... Jeez, I thought we had a pipe out or something. She, I, no, I, no, no, it's fine. It's not the plumbing. It's just the little girl on a rocking horse for some reason. I don't know what the fuck she is. Shut the fuck up, little girl on a rocking horse trying to sleep. Jesus Christ, I almost called a plumber. Just for a rough or something. 